Hey guys, welcome to the fourth masterclass on Chris the Freelancer. I'm joined here by Derek Pankow, who's an expert on flight hacking, which for those of you who don't know, is a system in which you can get uh, cheap or free flights by using things like credit card rewards points, error fares. Um, I'm going to let Derek talk more about that. But as we're all here to make money and travel the world, um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Derek now to introduce himself and talk about the system and how flight hacking works. Thanks, Chris. Um, my name is Derek, and in this masterclass, we're going to be talking about how frequent flyer points work and how you can use the way the system is built to acquire a lot of points for free and then use those points to take free flights. Um, I've traveled about 28 countries so far, and uh, when I first started traveling, my flights were really expensive because I was paying full price for everything. Uh, and today, I pay very little for my flights. I pay um, next to nothing uh, to, to fly all the world and kind of do all my travels. So um, yeah, excited to hear, uh, or excited to share some of how that works with you guys. Okay, awesome. All right, well, without further ado, let's get uh, straight into the masterclass. Okay, so how does this whole travel hacking thing work? How does frequent flyer points work? Mm. Well, um, so first of all, let's, let's define frequent flyer points and frequent flyer miles. Um, because a lot of people think that in order to get frequent flyer points, you have to be a frequent flyer. You have to fly a lot, and you know, you watch the movie Air, and you see um, George Clooney. He's like flying, you know, several several times a week, yeah. uh, and that's how he gets his points. Um, frequent flyer points are actually uh, they're a way that um, airlines used to try and lure you in as a customer, but today uh, one of their main uses is for credit card companies to try and lure you in as a customer. So what you'll often see is advertisements online for from Chase, for example, who says, hey, get 50,000 points when you sign up for the Chase Sapphire card. Or you'll see an ad from Delta saying, hey, you get 50,000 Delta miles when you sign up for XYZ credit card. Mm -hmm. And all kinds of other businesses are using a similar model. Hotels have you know, their own loyalty programs. But uh, because, the, because of the way the credit card companies work, we're able to leverage sort of loopholes in the system to use, that, use, use the system to our advantage, so to mm -hmm. speak. So the way the system works in re relationship to credit cards is that credit card companies uh, dangle these kind of, these free miles to get you to sign up for, your, for credit cards. And what they know from their statistical analysis of their customer base is that most people, once they get a credit card, they're gonna pay the annual fees every year, they're gonna run up money on their credit cards and pay interest rates, um, and they're very, this is actually a very profitable business model for the banks to give you 50,000 miles and then hope that you become a customer for the next five, 10 years. Because most people get a credit card and they're using it for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 years. Yeah. Right? Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn uh, how you can repeatedly sign up for new credit cards and then get those large upfront bonuses over and over again. Um, just for context, a frequent flyer point is generally worth about two cents. So uh, if you get 50,000 miles, that's approximately $1,000 in flights just for doing this once. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole process takes, the first time you do it, it's probably going to take something like three, four, five hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but every time after that, it takes less than an hour. So uh, I probably spend uh, on, on actual travel hacking, since you know this is probably my business now, so I spend a little bit more time on it. But yeah. on the actual earning of miles and spending miles, I spend maybe 20 minutes a month. On, on this process, okay. um, and it gets me in, enough free flights to pretty much travel the world for free. So yeah, great. So let's jump into um, this, the step by step process of what you actually do to turn these miles. So step one is uh, get your credit score in order, and we'll go a little bit more into detail on that. Uh, step two is you apply for the credit card. Um, usually, you can just do that online. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it works better if you go physically into a bank branch, but 98% of the time you can just do it online. And then step three, uh, the, the part of the process that's probably the most challenging is you need to meet the spending requirement. So um, this is anywhere between one and five thousand uh, dollars that you need to spend within 90 days on the card. So for example, uh, the Chase Sapphire card, they might give you 50,000 points after you spend three thousand dollars in your first 90 days. Mm -hmm. For people who are living in expensive uh, first world cities, say New York, San Francisco, London, 
this should be no problem at all. You know, just spend all your groceries when you're eating out, etc., cetera, um, on your credit card, and it should be pretty easy to meet that requirement. Yeah. Um, for people living in more rural areas, or people like myself, who, who's traveling, like nobody takes credit cards in Thailand, yeah. right? Like, good luck with that. Um, it's a little bit more challenging. So, you, uh, so there are certain techniques that people use to uh, artificially increase their spending. Mm-hmm. But I think for the most part, uh, the, the, most people are able to just meet their spending requirements, uh, just kind of using it for everyday use. Uh, if you have trouble, then just try and put your rent on your credit card. So that's, that's kind of pro- the most challenging part is just making sure you spend enough money on the card to, mm-hmm. to meet the requirement and get the miles. So I should probably mention the golden rule. The, the number one rule with all of travel hacking is yeah. to never hold a balance on any credit card ever. So uh, like pay the fee, every, pay the full amount every month. Every month. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you're not hacking the credit card system. They're doing exactly, you're doing exactly what they want you yeah. to do, right? Because the whole why they offer these amazing rewards is the assumption that you're going to hold a balance and they're going to make money on the interest. Exactly. Um, so you either, with credit cards, I've used credit cards for multiple years and I've never held a balance. But for some people, you would never recommend them to have a credit card because of that financial management problem. So yeah, that's like a big thing. If you can't trust yourself with a credit card, that, that could be an issue for you. As far as like the travel hacking stuff goes, yeah, you really have to treat it as, as a debit card. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially because like once, once you get into the higher levels of this stuff, you're going to have access to a lot of credit. I mean, I have access to close to probably seventy, eighty thousand $80,000 right now that I could just get yeah. if I wanted. And it's, yeah. um, for someone who can't like manage money, yeah. it's dangerous to have yeah. access to a lot. A lot of cash. So I definitely get that in order first um, if you guys want to do this. But if you can make sure that you're gaming the system and the system isn't gaming you, then this is really going to work in your favor. Yeah. Right? So no, no holding a balance ever uh, is the number one rule. Uh, okay, so once you've met the spending requirements, what happens after that is usually you need to wait about two weeks. Um, a lot of these the systems in these banks are literally... 15 years old and there's just all kinds of weird stuff um, and one of them is that even once you meet the requirement uh, and they know it just takes them some time to get you the miles so in two weeks you'll get your miles um, and then you can just spend them on whatever you want to spend them on um, where most people make mistakes in this area is they they spend them on things like gift cards or an xbox or you know there's um, there's a lot of these are called redemptions uh, the credit card companies put these, plaster these in front of you, right? They, they put these on the front page of your credit card sign up. They're like, hey, spend all your miles and you, you'll get an Xbox. Yeah. Um, because they want you to spend the miles on things that don't cost them as much, yeah. right? But the best redemptions for miles uh, almost always is flights. And that's where, we, where you'll get the best value. Um, and then so the process of actually redeeming your miles for flights is uh, typically you go to the airline's website, you book the flights using the miles that you've earned. Um, sometimes, some miles you have to transfer into airlines, but for the most part, um, yeah. They, uh, and I'll show you. I'll show a demo of how that works on the screen mm-hmm. in a bit. So that's kind of the the A to Z mm-hmm. uh, of the process. Do you have any questions so far? Okay. So just to to summarize, you're applying for credit cards and getting that sign up bonus straight away, and that's the the major part of it to to get these sign up bonuses, and then continually sign up to new credit cards to get more sign up bonuses. Yeah. Is that the main part of it or is there like a long term goal with each card as well? There's not a long term goal with each card. Um, that, that's, that's basically basically what you said is the, the whole process. Um, depending on your credit score, uh, so I personally open a new credit card once every two months. Okay. Um, if you have a really high credit score, you could probably do it once a month. If you have a lower credit score, maybe once every three, four months, yeah. um, just kind of depending on where you are when you're getting started. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically the process. If you're getting 50,000 miles every two months, yeah. that's enough for a round trip vacation to uh, Central America or South America every two months. Mm-hmm. Uh, or that's actually two and a half. It's actually about three one-way flights uh, every okay. two months that you're getting in Latin America, or uh, one free one-way flight to uh, Asia or probably not quite a round trip to Europe. So a free trip to Europe will probably take you three or four months to earn. Yeah. A free trip to Asia, probably about four months. And a free trip to Latin America, probably just one or two months yeah. uh, using the system. And you can repeat it 
almost infinitely for a while, for probably three or four years before you start running out of uh, cards to apply for. <laughs> so the only limit is the amount of cards that are available to apply for. Right. Yeah, because you can't reapply for the same card and get the same bonus, obviously. Uh, you can, actually. You can, actually. There's a lot of them where you can. Okay. Um, different companies have different rules. Okay. Um, I, don't, I, I mean, I can list them, but it's, it, we're, getting, we're getting into the, the nitty-gritty details. Yeah. But is this something uh, that you, you talk more in detail in, in your, your full guide, right? Yeah. I, uh, I, so this process, the process of canceling and reapplying is yeah. actually, I mean, I haven't even had the limit yet. So, yeah. um, so it's something that I talk about briefly. It's not something I go into like in-depth detail on. It's really something that I don't think most people are going to hit up against. Like if yeah. you're... By the time you're traveling for free for four years, you'll, you'll already know the limitations and <laughs> yeah, have like yeah. expert level stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, All right, cool. Cool. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about credit because I think that's the main barrier for most people to get into it. Um, the, you know, do I have enough of a credit score to get, get approved for these credit cards? And does doing this process hurt my credit score? That's the number one uh, concern I hear from people who are thinking about getting into travel hacking. So let me, first of all, let me address uh, what kind of credit score you need to get started to do this. Okay. Um, the answer is you cannot have bad credit, <laughs> but you don't need to have good credit. Okay. Which sounds like a paradox, but um, what I mean by that just is- It just needs to be good enough. It just needs to be good enough and there has to be no negative items. So okay. you can't have a default or a bankruptcy or you know any, anything like that on your credit report. Um, but if you just don't, so, so that's what I mean by if you have bad credit, that's if you have certain items in your credit report that look bad when someone's looking it up. Yeah. Um, if you don't have good credit, what I mean by that is you just don't have a credit history yet. Mm -hmm. You don't have, um, you know, if someone checks your credit, you just don't have that uh, established track record. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of techniques you can do to rapidly establish uh, that track record in, say, three to 12 months. Um, so you can go from having zero credit history to having um, enough of a credit history to get whatever credit card you want in a very short period of time. Um, but the negative items, if you have negative items, then I, would, I think that probably does disqualify you from doing this process. Okay, so uh, the, the main concern that I hear from people who want to get into this is, hey, isn't this going to hurt my credit score? I mean, like opening a new credit card every two months, yeah. it sounds like it's going to be bad for my credit score. So to address that, I'm going to go ahead and log into my credit report and show you guys um, how how doing this actually affects your credit and how it's affected my credit over the last uh, over the last you know x amount of time. Uh, so, so this website is um, for people in the U.S. They want to see their credit score. Exactly. Yeah. So Credit Karma is a free website for uh, checking your credit score. Uh, they give you a free credit report once a week, and there's never any there's never any um, there's never any charge. Okay, so. I want to show you guys, so my credit score right now kind of balances out somewhere around 740-ish, uh, which is really high, which is 740 credit score, you can get just about any credit card you want. Yeah. Um, I have the top of the line credit cards from American Express and Citi and, uh, and many of those credit card companies. But if you take a look on the left, this is actually where my credit card started, credit score started. And it doesn't go further back than, uh, than, than two years ago, but it was actually quite a bit lower than this before. So I started at 600 and I was probably more around 500 just like a year or two before that. So doing this process of opening new credit cards actually helps your credit score quite a lot. And the way it works is that the, your credit score is, is calculated using a few different factors. and one of them is actually the number of accounts you have. The more accounts you have open, the higher your credit score is. Um, as long as you're paying everything off on time and you're not using much of your credit, uh, the credit that you have, the more credit you have that you're not using, the higher your credit score is. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, the only thing that hurts your credit scores when you open new credit cards is that uh, you get inquiries on your credit report. An inquiry is anytime you apply for a credit card, um, that shows up in your credit report. And if banks see that you're applying for a lot of things, uh, that does hurt your credit score a bit. However, uh, each inquiry only hurts your score by about three to five points. Mm -hmm. um, and they only affect your credit score for about six months. Mm -hmm. Versus many of these other factors have a much larger impact. So if you look at credit inquiries, it says low impact. 
And if you look at credit card utilization, which is uh, how much credit I have available versus how much I'm using, that's very high impact. Payment history, high impact. Derogatory marks, meaning anything like the uh, unpaid accounts or bankruptcies, high impact. Yeah. So all my high impact stuff is in the green. And then a lot of this low impact stuff is actually in the red because of the credit card hacking, right? I'm constantly getting new inquiries. My age of credit history isn't that high because mm -hmm. um, because if you open a new credit card, they average out the age of your credit card. You add one with a zero age, uh, it lowers your average age of yeah, credit history, right? So, so my low and medium impact stuff uh, is not as healthy, but as long as I'm taking care of my high impact stuff, my credit score is actually very strong. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a very like good way to break it down in terms of high impact and low impact. Um, and you take the hits on the low impact to but keep the high impact really good. Exactly. And so if you're planning on buying a house, then I wouldn't do this process. Okay. You know, like if you're planning on buying a house in the next year, this process is probably not the best idea. Okay. However, doing this process now, and then if, if you're planning to buy a house, say in six years, yeah. and you do travel hacking for three years, and then you stop applying for credit cards, yeah. What's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of accounts, which is good for your your um, which is good for your credit history. Your credit increase is going to fall off after six to twelve months, mm -hmm. and your age of credit history is going to have time to build up, and all the rest of them is going to continue to be strong. So in the very long run, this is actually great for your credit score. In the short run, um, every time you open a credit card, it hurts your score slightly, and then it recovers in about two months, and then it starts to kind of build up from there. Okay. So uh, I hope that addresses. That's the main concern I think most people have with doing this is, will it hurt my credit score? And the answer for the vast majority of people is no, it's probably going to help your credit score. Awesome. Cool. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about how you can get started. How can you get your first free flight? So there's a ton of different credit cards out there. Um, the number one credit card that I would probably recommend for most people who are just getting started and have a de decent credit score is the Chase Sapphire card. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, reason number one is the Chase Sapphire card lets you transfer your miles into a bunch of different airlines. So if you have 50,000 points with Chase, you can transfer that into United Airlines and book an international flight, or you can transfer them into Southwest Airlines and book a bunch of domestic flights. Um, you have a lot of options as to where you want to travel with once you have these points. Um, and Chase, um, Chase cards are good to get in the beginning when you're just starting to get into travel hacking. Because once you've opened more than five credit cards within a two year span, you can't get any Chase cards anymore. They, they recognize people as travel hackers and stop giving them credit cards. <laughs> They're cluing on. Uh, yeah, so they, they've kind of clued into what's going on. But and you're in, when you're just getting, you can just get all the Chase cards in the beginning, so the restriction doesn't really matter for you as much. Mm -hmm. So let me show you uh, what that looks like. Okay, so this is the Chase Sapphire credit card that I was talking about. You get 50,000 points after you spend your first $4,000 in purchases within the first three months. They say that's $625 towards travel when redeemed through Chase Ultimate Rewards. They're actually underestimating here. This is probably worth uh, $1,000, maybe even a little bit more than $1,000. And then there's a little bit of information about the credit card. Uh, this part over here is uh, a really key part. It's $0 intro annual fee for the first year. After that, it's, it's $95. Um, there's a lot of techniques to make sure you never have to pay an annual fee, right. um, and that's that's one of the the, the kind of um, the fine tuning in travel hacking is uh, is dancing with the banks around their annual fees. And there's um, so one technique is if you call and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about canceling my account," they they'll often just come back and say, uh, "Well, what if we waive the fee? Will we keep the account open?" Mm -hmm. um, and that's, so that's one technique, and there's a bunch of other techniques you can use to basically make sure you never have to pay an annual fee. I, uh, I almost never pay an annual fee. The, the only annual fee I pay is for the first credit card I ever open that I never want to close because it keeps my credit history uh, old. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, you, if you do it well, you don't have to pay an annual fee um, as you're going through this process. So, you, so I click the apply now, and then you just go through the credit card application process. And then if you get a pending screen, oftentimes what happens, you will get to a screen that says, hey, we we're, we need to make a decision uh, and we'll, yeah. we'll get in touch with you. Uh, that's what happens 80% of the time. 20% of the time you'll get a yes right away and, 20, and sometimes you'll get a no right away, just yeah. if it's very clear, but most of the time they'll have a human look at it. Um, so a, a really, really good tip in this process is to call them. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So. 
I, I don't know why it, it, it works like this, but um, if you call them, your chances of getting approved are much higher uh, than if you just go through the online process and wait for a human to like look at your stuff. Mm. Um, and oftentimes, it's they just want to they just want to have a conversation with you and kind of make sure everything you said is real. Yeah. Um, and they're not. It's it's not like an interrogation at all. It's just it's just a very simple phone conversation, and then they, they'll they'll give you an answer right on the spot. So instead of you applying and having to wait a week and feeling nervous about whether it worked or not, you just call and get an answer yeah. right away. So, uh, so once you get your points, uh, how do you actually book your flight? Um, so I showed you guys how to how to apply for the credit card, how to get the points. Uh, once once you spend the miles, you'll wait a week or two. You'll get the points in your account. Now what do you do? You have frequent flyer points. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at how you would actually spend them. So this is the flight that I'm actually booking. Um, I'm going to be in Bali and then I'm going to go to New York uh, at the end of this month. Yeah. Um, so the way you would use your miles is you go to the airline that you're booking with, in this case I'm booking with Delta, and it says show price in money or miles, right? So you just click find flights, you click on miles and you click find flights, and it pulls up a calendar of how much it costs in miles, uh, plus usually there's a little bit of, in cash, so there might be like a like a $40 taxes or fees or something like yeah. that. Uh, but this is a flight, so going from uh, Denpasar, Bali to New York City, this is a flight that would normally cost me, Denpasar to New York City, about $1,000 yeah. uh, or $1,200. And I'm paying $40 here. And I'm, I'm actually going to use a different credit card to, uh, in addition to this to get the $40 for free as well. Uh, so this flight, this flight basically across the Atlantic is going to cost me zero. Um, using a combination of the 40,000 delta miles and uh, a few miles from a different card as well. Okay, so the fee, you can use miles to get the fee off as well? Yeah. The taxes and all that? Right, yeah. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, so I earn the miles by having a delta credit card, yeah. but I can pay for the fees uh, to take a delta flight with miles using a different credit card that lets me write off any travel expense. Oh, Does wow. that make sense? Jeez, how does that how does that work <laughs> with the yeah. writing off the travel expenses? Is that like one of the other benefits of these cards that they provide? Yeah, the different. So there's there's three credit cards that let you spend money on any travel expense mm -hmm. um, and use miles to pay for that. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the three are um, Capital One Venture, Wells Fargo Propel, and Barclay Arrival Plus. Mm -hmm. um, and those their points are cash equivalents. So mm -hmm. one point is worth one cent. You can just spend it on whatever you want. Okay. On travel, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the overview of how this whole system works. How you can earn miles really quickly and then use those miles to book free flights. Um, there's a lot that we didn't really go into in this in this short conversation, and um, that's I go a lot more into detail. So we mentioned the fees, for example. Yeah. How you get rid of the fees because you're opening a new credit card every two months. That's six credit cards in a year. Each one with a fee of at least a hundred dollars. You know, you're paying six hundred to a thousand dollars in fees if you don't know how to get rid of those fees. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot, there's in-depth techniques for getting rid of annual fees. Um, there's a lot more strategy around how to quickly bump up your credit score so you can get approved for the credit cards mm -hmm. you want. Um, there's strategies for uh, what's called manufactured spending so that you're creating spending without having to spend more money. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a lot of nuance that goes into making this system easy and repeatable and free uh, that, that I go into uh, in the course. Mm -hmm. um, and for anyone who's signing up uh, as a result of watching this masterclass, um, I've put together a special deal for you guys. Oh, um, where, so most people, when they get the course, they, they buy the free flights course and then they're offered a few things in addition. They're mm -hmm. offered, uh, hey, do you want to learn how to use hotel points as well? Get free mm -hmm. stays in hotels. Do you want to get um, some interviews with people who've uh, done a lot of travel hacking and hear their stories about how they earn their miles and where they mm -hmm. travel to and kind of get inspiration and knowledge from that? Um, so normally those together is another $40, $50, and I'm just going to throw that in for free for anyone who signs up uh, as a result of listening to this masterclass. That's awesome. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to do that, so <laughs> thanks, cool. thanks very much for extending that offer to us. For sure. Um, I do have a question about the whole system, and as like an Australian, and I'm, I'm sure there's a few people that are going to be watching this that uh, aren't necessarily from the United States. Most countries have a system like this, right? And um, there's credit cards in each country, but you, let's use Australia as, a, as an example. Like, any tips for, uh, like, Australians? Like, we obviously can't do this Chase Sapphire card or anything like that, but 
there's, we can take the similar process, right? Um, not, not nearly to the same extent, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so the U.S. is probably the best place for travel hacking. Canada is number two, and they're they're very close. U- U.S. and Canada um, both have a, a, you can you can get a lot of value out of travel yeah. travel hacking. And the U.K. is probably about um, half or slightly le- less than half of what you can get from the U.S. Yeah. Um, and then Australia and New Zealand is just like way 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 less. Yeah. Uh, there's only one credit card I know of in Australia that's kind of worth the effort. Mm-hmm. Um, and the rest of them are like very high annual fees that you can't get out of, or they just give you very little points, or yeah, um, yeah. So that's that's kind of my understanding of um, how it is around the world. All right. Well, if you guys are, are watching this and you're from Australia, I'm gonna be definitely looking into this. So so if you wanna yeah, stay tuned to the blog and the channel and everything, and I'll let you guys know if I figure out like um, right now. Actually, I just use. Um, my American Express card. It's a Qantas American Express card, and um, I didn't get a big sign-up bonus or um, you know anything like that. But it was it's a free card, no annual fee, um, and I make a point for every dollar. So it's not not a lot, but at least I am gaining points. But I'm gonna look more into this, and you've given me like a few in recommendations of cards. So um, yeah, if you guys are from Australia and want to know more about that, stay tuned. Um, but other than that, I don't know if I have any, any more questions. Is there anything you want to close out? Um, I think it's probably one of the best um, return on the in- investment of your time that I found. Yeah. So learning this process takes maybe about five hours to just understand all the theory. Yeah. Um, and it just unlocks so much uh, travel and adventure. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's a really worthwhile investment to, to learn this skill. Awesome. All right, well, if you guys want to check out the guide and, and get that you know, bonus offer, uh, just click on the first link in the description. I'll link Derek's course there. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, stay tuned to the channel, stay subscribed, and I'll see you guys on the next video.